Welcome to our channel, dedicated to exploring the timeless and profound stories of the Bible. Through captivating narratives and insightful analysis, we journey through the sacred scriptures to uncover the rich tapestry of wisdom, faith, and divine guidance woven within its pages. Join us as we delve into the lives of biblical figures, the teachings of Jesus Christ, and the transformative power of God's Word. Whether you're a devout believer seeking deeper spiritual understanding or simply curious about the stories that have shaped humanity's faith for millennia, you'll find inspiration and enlightenment here. Today we embark on a journey through time to explore the most important week for Christians worldwide, Holy Week, marked by crucial events in the life of Jesus Christ. This week is central to the Christian faith, filled with spiritual depth and hidden meanings. We will thoroughly investigate all the events, from Palm Sunday to Holy Thursday of the Last Supper, to fully understand their significance. As we delve into the early days of Jesus' ministry and the conflicts he faced with the religious authorities of the time, we realize that his teachings challenged the traditions and religious hierarchies in place. Instead of adhering strictly to the literal actions of Jewish law, Jesus explained the spiritual essence of the divine message, emphasizing love, compassion, and mercy. His parables, profound in their simplicity, shed light on social injustices, inviting listeners to inner transformation and genuine faith. Furthermore, the miracles performed by Jesus directly challenged traditional conceptions of spiritual authority. He healed the sick, cast out demons, and even raised the dead, demonstrating a divine power that transcended human limitations. These extraordinary feats were sources of admiration and astonishment for many, but posed a threat to the authority and existence of religious authorities. In the days leading up to his crucifixion, a series of tumultuous events marked Jesus' earthly journey. Among these events, the resurrection of Lazarus stands out as a pivotal point. Lazarus' story, recorded in the Gospels, is one of the most powerful accounts of Jesus' miracles. When Lazarus fell gravely ill and eventually died, Jesus, who was absent, finally arrived in Bethany four days after his death. Grief and mourning deeply enveloped the family and friends. Upon reaching Lazarus's tomb, Jesus confronted the pain of death and the despair of those who loved the deceased. Amidst tears and anguish, Jesus demonstrated his divine compassion and power by ordering the removal of the stone sealing the tomb and cried out with a firm voice, Lazarus, come out! What followed was a miracle of epic proportions. Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, emerged from the tomb still wrapped in burial cloths, leaving those present shocked and incredulous. The joy and wonder at the recently witnessed miracle of Lazarus's resurrection were a vivid evidence of Jesus' power over death and the promise of eternal life for those who believe in him. However, while many were touched and transformed by this event, others saw it as a direct challenge to their own authorities and traditions. The religious authorities, already disturbed by Jesus' growing following and his teachings, saw in Lazarus' resurrection a final challenge to their authority and influence. The news spread quickly throughout the region, and those who heard of the miracle were divided in their responses. Some marveled at Jesus' power and turned to him in faith and prayer, while others, especially the religious authorities, saw in Lazarus' resurrection a direct threat to their own interests and prerogatives. To them, this event represented more than just an extraordinary miracle. It was a clear sign that Jesus was gaining more followers and challenging their own authority and interpretation of the law. Feeling threatened and challenged, these authorities decided that the only way to contain the growing movement around Jesus was to eliminate him once and for all. Aware of the events, Jesus decided to enter Jerusalem as part of his divine plan to fulfill the messianic prophecies and carry out God's will. 
His entry into Jerusalem was not an impulsive act, but a conscious and deliberate action that carried profound and multiple meanings. This event is reported in various passages of the Gospels, with the most well-known account found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11, often referred to as Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem or the Palm Sunday event. The biblical text describes how Jesus sent two disciples to find a donkey and its colt, as prophesied, and how he was acclaimed by the crowd as he entered the city, marking one of the most emblematic moments of his life and an integral part of Christian tradition. Today, we'll navigate the internet on a journey through time to explore the most crucial week for Christians worldwide, Holy Week. This period is marked by essential events in the life of Jesus Christ, becoming a focal point in the Christian faith, filled with spiritual depth and hidden meanings. We will thoroughly investigate all the events, from Palm Sunday to Maundy Thursday, to fully understand their importance. As we delve into the early days of Jesus' ministry and conflicts with the religious authorities of the time, we see that his teachings challenged established religious traditions and hierarchies. Jesus explained the spiritual essence of the divine message, emphasizing love, compassion and mercy, inviting listeners to inner transformation and genuine faith. Furthermore, Jesus' miracles challenged traditional conceptions of spiritual authority, demonstrating a divine power that transcended human limitations. These extraordinary feats, a source of admiration for many, represented a threat to religious authorities. In the days leading up to his crucifixion, a series of tumultuous events marked his earthly journey. Among them, the resurrection of Lazarus stood out. This powerful account was a living testimony to Jesus' power over death and the promise of eternal life for believers. However, for religious authorities, it was a challenge to their authority and traditions. Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, known as Palm Sunday, was marked by the expectation and enthusiasm of the crowds who welcomed him with palms and olive branches, recognizing him as the promised Messiah. However, while the crowds acclaimed him, religious leaders watched with concern, fearing a revolt against Roman rule or their own authority. Palm Sunday marked the beginning of a tumultuous week, culminating in Jesus' crucifixion. However, at that moment, the crowds celebrated with hope, unaware of the drama that would unfold. To them, Jesus was the coming King, the one who would bring salvation and liberation. At that moment, Jesus not only cleansed the temple, but also made a powerful statement about the true essence of worship. He taught those present and those who would come to hear about this event that God desires worshippers who worship Him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 True worship is not rooted in empty rituals or religious formalities, but in sincere hearts and lives transformed by faith and love for God. By cleansing the temple, Jesus was calling the people back to the original purpose of God's house, to be a place of encounter with Him, of prayer and communion. He was inviting them to a worship that transcends external formalities and reaches the essence of the relationship with the Heavenly Father. On Holy Monday, while the people of Jerusalem were busy with their daily activities, Jesus challenged them to examine their hearts and priorities. He invited them to authentic and committed worship, manifested not only in words and rituals, but in a life lived in accordance with God's will. Therefore, Holy Monday is a reminder for all of us of the importance of true worship in our lives, an invitation to evaluate our own hearts and religious practices, ensuring that our worship is genuine, sincere, and centered on God. It is a reminder that God's house should be a place of prayer and communion, where we encounter the living presence of the Lord and are transformed by His love and grace. Jesus, considering the contradictory actions of the sons in the parable, highlighted the lesson to the religious leaders listening to him. 
He emphasized that tax collectors and prostitutes were entering the kingdom of God ahead of them because despite initially seeming distant from God, they demonstrated repentance and genuine faith. Meanwhile, the religious leaders, despite their declarations of pity and obedience, failed to fulfill God's will. The parable of the two sons is a powerful lesson about the importance of true obedience and repentance before God, regardless of external appearances or empty declarations of piety. After explaining the lesson of the parable, Jesus told another one, known as the parable of the wicked tenants. In it, Jesus described a landowner who planted a vineyard and rented it out to some tenants. When the time for harvest came, the landowner sent servants to collect his share of the fruits, but the tenants beat, killed, and stoned them. This twist in the story shocked the listeners, who recognized the betrayal and violence of the tenants. Finally, the landowner sent his son, thinking, they will respect my son. The inclusion of the landowner's son in the narrative added an emotional and dramatic dimension to the parable. Listeners could feel the owner's expectation and hope that his son would be respected and honored by the tenants. However, the tenants' response was tragic and fatal. When they saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him out of the vineyard. Jesus then posed a question for reflection. When the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? The answer was obvious to the listeners. He will bring those wicked men to justice and rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the fruits at the right time. Thus, Jesus concluded the parable by highlighting the divine justice that would be executed against the wicked tenants and the transfer of the vineyard to others who would be more faithful in their responsibility. The parable of the wicked tenants is a powerful illustration of Jesus' rejection by the religious leaders of his time and the tragic consequences of disobedience and unbelief. It challenges us to reflect on our own response to Christ's authority and leadership in our lives and reminds us of the importance of living faithfully and gratefully before God. Another highly significant parable is known as the parable of the wicked servants recorded in Matthew 22, 1-14. In it, Jesus explains that the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. With this introduction, Jesus set the stage for the parable, where listeners imagined a king organizing a grand banquet to honor the special occasion of his son's wedding. Regardless of someone's circumstances or merits, Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is open to all those who accept the invitation with faith and gratitude. However, the parable has a surprising twist. When the king came in to see the guests, he found a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. The king asked him why he was not dressed appropriately, leaving the man speechless. Then the king ordered his servants to tie up the man and throw him outside where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This final part of the parable emphasizes the importance of responding appropriately to the king's invitation. Although the invitation is for everyone, each person is responsible for accepting it with humility and gratitude. Those who reject the invitation or accept it irreverently will face severe consequences. Therefore, the parable of the wicked servants vividly illustrates the responsibility and privilege of those who are called to participate in the kingdom of God, as well as the consequences of neglect or rejection of this invitation. It challenges us to respond with faith, humility, and gratitude to the generous invitation of the heavenly King to celebrate and enjoy the blessings of His kingdom. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Please let us know in the comments if you would like to see the continuation of the events between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it helps us a lot. Hugs and may God be with you.